and we're back with some Dan to Dan from here with it's Joe. It's only been it's two been, months, three months. It's been a little, we're talking about almost yeah. 20 chapters today, just shy. Yeah. So, well, like, so where we left off last time was like, re, uh, Ayase and Vimola get trapped in the mirror, right? Oh, no, we did not get to that. That's like, the oh, little, we didn't. That's the oh. little beginning session here where you get this oh, okay. Momo and Vimola chapter where they hang out yes. a little bit. Uh, Momo's still being mean to to Vimola. And then you have the slit mouth lady fight in like chapter 75 and 76 where they get trapped and then escape. You're right. I got very dyslexic and mixed up the numbers when you posted them. Mm. Because we, I said six and then my brain took that six and brought it down and took over the four at the seventy. That's that's my fault that your brain is broken, Joe. That's, yes. <laughs> that's my B. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we can start there, right? So this arc is... It's got that little mini arc with Vamola and Momo that's setting up stuff that I think we still haven't fully capitalized on. It's like... It, it this like sets up a threat that's like looming in the background that we like we have to keep in mind and like puts another pressure for what the real arc is. Yeah. Uh, later, the real arc consists of part one that we'll be talking about today, which is the yeah. aliens' first assault where they track down Vomola's ball. Uh, yeah. We'll talk a little bit about that, of course, and then it ends with a little bit of some serpi- ser- serpion ser- serpoions. How do you say their name? I don't know, man. The Serpos. That sounds, yeah. that sounds a little racist to call them Serpos, but... The but, original aliens. Yes. Um, the We do a little bit of stuff with the Serpos, and we end with a little bit of setup for a training arc, so we can, we can break it up into these little sections. Um, yeah. I wanted to bring up, I remember last time I was complaining of like, man, Momo's too mean to Vimola, like... I don't really like that this thread's still ongoing, and we're actually opening up with adding on to that, where, like, they have kind of a sweet chapter, but it's not, like, too sweet, where Ayase is still pretty mean, still calling but her a skank and a bitch. Like, it's also, like, like it's the very much the beginning of, like, a friendship, because they, they do have some good chemistry, and Vimola seems to actually care. Yes, I like when uh, Vomola is learning language from Momo and and yeah. Karun. It's cute. Yes. Uh, it's the what did so going into this arc, I I literally thought we were just going to move on to more spirit based stuff, and then like Vomola and uh, Ayase were going to have to deal with this problem on their own because they're the only ones cursed with it. Yeah, basically, it, it feels like the slit mouth lady would be a bigger thing. When it's yeah. first introduced, but it's not. It, it's this looming threat that, like, I think I think it's going to pay off in dividends. I have a very good feeling about yeah. this Reiko stuff by the end of it. But Same. The, the actual opening is a pretty cool, like, short encounter, like a little short JoJo fight. Um, like, running into the sun and taking him out in a chapter or two kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah, And, and it, it's very villain of the week, but then it has some long-term repercussions. I think my favorite moment that I mark down here for this fight is when, like, uh, Vomola goes, like, off-screen and then just charges in in dinosaur form, like, in the full <laughs> dinosaur suit and yeah. tackles the shit out of Reiko. I thought that was pretty cool. It's sick. I also like just, like, page turns that involve Reiko I think are really cool where... Um, especially the introduction where you just like suddenly you turn an alley and there's this giant scary lady. Yeah. And I think that's really effective in which chapter is it? I think it's chapter 76 or 77 where after they escape the mirror, which I, I like the mirror abilities that uh, the slip mouth yeah. lady has. Um, we're getting to some like weird standy abilities with some of these spirits that mm-hmm. are kind of more like physics breaking and it's like a little puzzle but i think that's a cool way to handle it you don't have to like explain the power system it just yeah. kind of is what it is and but it I... feels very in character like you can immediately tell from like your first interaction like the importance of that mirror and what this character is like yes I, uh, again the the handling it like you you know what thinking about it you already know that the reiko flashback is going to be a fucking banger right because yeah uh, all these alien flashbacks are not the alien ones. The spirit ones consistently surprise us, as I recall, 
where we're like, wow, okay, I'm feeling things now for this horrible entity that's been haunting us. Yeah. I love that page turn. I think you were getting to it on 77 where, like, Grandma's talking about how, like, no, you just, like, banished her for, like, 10 seconds. Um, That's not going to keep working. Now she's going to hunt you down. Yes, uh, it's really cool. And, like, the... Uh, we've talked about how this author kind of nails like both humor and just very horrifying visuals i think an example from last time was uh breaking the wall and seeing the horrifying room with all the spell tags for example or turning the page and seeing the evil eye like stuff like that and i think reiko her massive form peering through the windows and like walking around the house is such effective but simple horror to me that it, it just really hits it also feels different because like turbo granny kind of was stuck in the tunnel like we had to go back and find her and, like basically pull her out mm, yeah and like this is much more like oh no she's she left her home and she is hunting you down like she is not tied to like that ruined area or and she doesn't feel anything strongly about it yes you know? very much gives her a uh, distinctive feel in comparison and it's and it's like in a lot of the other spirits, like there's some sort of like background as to why they're still tethered to the world. Like the acrobat, acro silky, like got tethered to um, I forget their names every single time. Um, God, what's her um, name? Isa. I I I bow Isa. Oh no. Yeah. I, see? Isa. Isa. Yeah. Like she's tethered to him. So it's like okay, she's just haunting her. So like she's gonna be around her all the time. But we don't. But Raiko seems to be, from what I've gathered, like pretty free roaming, essentially. It's um, like a automatic stand kind of curse where uh, yeah, once you're cursed, she can chase you down, which I think is cool. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we we get that scene, uh, right afterwards where like Vimola, where we're having the inverse now, where um, Momo and Vimola are now the uh. The people that had to be quarantined compared to Gigi. And so they have to like be kept in the room together. And we have that like scene where like Raiko is talking to Momo. Yes. Be like, before we jump yeah. into that, one last thing, because uh, mm -hmm. about the uh, chapter 77 has a lot of school interactions. It's very endearing yeah. to see Vimola learn Japanese words. Uh, mm -hmm. I wanted to note that I feel like, and I don't know if you got this feeling, there's been an increasingly high amount of emphasis put on the class rep <clears throat> yes she's been there since yeah. the start mm -hmm. uh it just kind of stuck out to me this chapter how much like she's more characterized than the other classmates and i feel like there is room for her to join the party next um it doesn't seem like it'll be anything immediate but i feel like something's yeah. gonna happen with this character something yeah and I'm, I'm wondering if like maybe she'll end up being like the one human character of the group like, I, that, that's the, like, side support that has to go deal with other things or, like, get things in position, you know? Unlikely. There... But <laughs> we'll I, uh, see how the soccer team comes as out. As for, uh, God, I don't remember his name. The t Taka something. Ta yes. Ta Takakura. There you go. I happened yeah. to stumble on a page. As for Takakura, he he's not very present in this arc. Uh, no. Much to, I'm sure, people's uh, enjoyment. But, you know, I do think he's going to be the vital key for them to actually survive um i don't I think, see them getting out of this without him like coming in clutch personally i think he's gonna find vimola and actually figure out what she's saying like i i have a feeling he's like secretly learning her language so he can talk to her <sighs> that's our goat right there <laughs> yeah so but yes let's talk about reiko's manipulation of momo i thought this was a really sweet chapter um, yeah where uh, Reiko confesses through the windows, but um, as was established in the previous chapter, uh, Okarun only uses uh, like honorifics and like uh, formal speech with Momo, but not Gigi, and that's how she's able to catch him. Yeah, that's a nice like knowing of the character. And I uh -huh. think it's explained that like only because Momo didn't know that until the morning after like the imprint that reiko got of momo didn't have that information so yeah that makes sense to me yeah uh, i i i just like the way that this is paneled in the way it's like shot because it has that horror movie vibe to it because it's got like the dim lighting it's got like very 
quiet paneling. Yeah. Like there's not a lot going on, and it if the room feels very empty, as well. I really like and... pages uh six uh six through nine in chapter seventy eight, where like it's just a lot of uh a lot of Momo laying down and like zooming in on her face as the yeah. nerves are getting to her. Mm -hmm. And then we never see Okaroon's face either. It's just the back of his head all the time. Yeah, but that that leads to the true horror where like after Momo calls it out, the banging on the house seems so yeah. intense. And then you get to see Reiko uh, outside the house again. So using that scale uh, outside the house to add on to the horror, I thought was really cool. Whoops. Yeah. Do they? I know they say that after 10 p.m. she can't go outside anymore, correct? Do they explain so. why? Because I think that's explain... just arbitrarily when Reiko comes out, I guess. Okay. Because they run into her during the daylight because they're trying to get to school. So I guess she's just tied to those ruins in the morning uh, or in the day. Yeah, I think well, the granny says like Reiko is more aggressive at night. So it's probably something where, yeah, she she's just all able to free room when the, all right. the night's going. What are we thinking? Are we thinking like beauty queen gone awry? prom queen kind of situation or like princess or... i mean there's definitely got to be that beauty angle uh for yeah. her backstory so yeah probably yeah probably beauty king queen go go goes awry and then her life spirals out of control when she dies with a bunch of resentment i think that's yeah that's where we'll go and here's the thing right these well characterized uh ghosts tend to latch on to one of the characters yeah, Acro Silky and the Evil Eye were the same thing, where they get like a fair amount of characterization and then end up as part of the party. So class rep somehow shows back up. I don't know how she comes in and like, "Hey, Okaroon, why don't you come to school?" Oh yeah. shit, <laughs> something like that. Something. It's. Hmm. I like. I could. I could definitely see it where like, he Okaroon does it because they have to train for five days, right? Yes. Where, like, she goes into the house at night trying to find him, and Raiko's there. And it's like, oh, you know who these people are. And and latches onto her. Maybe. Uh, it could be. I don't know. I feel like Raiko... Yeah, I guess. I don't know if she would have had the chance to do that before, but I feel like she would have. But I I just... regardless, uh, we move on to the next bit here, which is just more school stuff. It's basically just a chill chapter. It's kind of setting up some stuff for this next action bit because it shows like Gigi practicing his Kamehameha wave that he can do now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a thing he can do. Um, Momo keeps up the cranky streak. So like there's a, a good amount of in between back and forth with them. And, like, I wasn't super into it, but looking back on it, I really like where it's headed. Um, cause, cause, like, cause, like, Momo hasn't staked her claim, right? So whenever she barges into the classroom and she's like, Okaroon, we gotta talk. Like, she does, she's not coming off in a good light. Um, yeah. Cause, hey, you guys are not official. Stop being, uh, Japanese manga protagonists for one goddamn second. Yeah. Um, but, like, even as early as, I think it's, like, chapter 80 or 81, we get, like, a straight-up, uh, I think, yeah, it's 80, where we get a straight-up confession from Okaru. It's the first time he says he loves her. So yeah. it's like, oh, fucking finally, we're moving. We're doing it for real. Yes. We're going. We're cooking. Yeah. And, uh, not to, not to mention that 79 ends with the banger uh, introductions of the aliens we're going to be fighting here. Yeah. <laughs> man man these guys look awesome crazy for the double spread with gg and yase with the fucking pokemon uh the persona is... you mean oh yeah the persona sorry yes. i think there's also isn't there also a pokemon that kind of looks like this i guess you could say clay doll is kind of yeah, like doll. this yeah that's what i'm thinking of uh, but it's straight up uh, a bahakiri or whatever from persona yeah he reflects physical so watch out <laughs> that's actually worse because they're both physical attackers i know and then we got copyright infringement uh alien power ranger yes uh okaroon's enemies are like a metal gear rex you got uh two xenomorphs you got a flying xenomorph ship and a xenomorph uh cool ass guy 
and then a, yeah. a cool mantis. And I really like the uh, what, what I assume is the main one, the gravity manipulator. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like his design. What's interesting is how fast Okarun disposes of like three of them. So like he's clear like you got Ira here, God, or is it Iba? Fuck man, Where, what's her name? Or is it Arisa? It's a Yatsu, I thought. No, no, she's not well, fighting it. Momo, yeah. Um, I'm waiting for someone to say her. We always forget her name. We're so I bad. Know. I like how one of the aliens does the Uriel Wall. Uh. From Street Fighter. Is that his name? Urian. <laughs> Urian. N- names are not your strong suit today. No. I'll throw them on you. I Yeah, I like the little sniper guy. This is just a great action chapter. Looking through my notes, um, there's not much going on, but there's good um, tension-breaking humor here at the end where the evil eye comes out. And he's like, what's up with these boogers? Because <laughs> yeah. it, it was a very... like it, The chapter opens with a love confession straight into some of the most high-tense action and then you have the ending and the starting of the next chapter be pretty humorous with the evil eye. Yeah. Which, uh, uh, yeah. would you say the evil eye is the strongest guy in the team? Probably, right? I would say so. Yeah, but, right now. Okarun might be able to, like, overcome him because Shonen I mean, protagonist. Didn't but... Okarun pretty definitively beat him? Like, Okarun was tired even going that... into that fight. He beat the well, shit out of him. The, the, the thing is, like, the evil I got back up and was ready to go another round. Okarun was like, I can't do this anymore. Kind of a thing. Yeah, true. Um, I guess, like, in a burst of strength, Okarun wins, but not yeah. enough to keep the evil eye. He down. can win round one. He can't win the other two. Yeah. Yo, we're power scaling Dan to Dan. Now, this is the power scaling that matters. Yes. <laughs> this is what we're um, into. I think it's also interesting that the aliens uh, mention that Earth is like a higher gravity than their planets or where they're from yes they're struggling and you know this kind of sets up for us beating them here but not beating them in the home world yeah but Which... like at the same time going off of dbz logic shouldn't they also be stronger when they go to the home world but hmm. yeah you might be right <laughs> maybe but hey i there is room for here for us to like maybe you're right takakura finds out the truth of uh of Vamola, and then Vamola gets kidnapped, and then Momo especially is like, no, we're going to go save her because I'm, I'm the one who wronged her, so I need yeah. to take responsibility. Could definitely see that happening, or because, but, like, Okarun loses his balls here again, so it's like, I feel like we took a step back unfortunately, which which makes me worry a little bit, because the plot had, like, it's weird, because I love Dandanan, but would, would you agree that it hasn't had, like, an emotional high point yet it's it's just been a lot of fun hype but i feel like it hasn't had like that yeah. arc that really makes you like go holy shit these characters i think yeah i feel i i'm hoping we're building to that now because yeah. we're in a intense sequence where like all the characters are forcibly having to work together previous now we're like previously it was just like everyone just happens to be in the same spot and we just barely scrape by and we move on with our days Mm-hmm. and there's kind of like a little bit back and forth but now we're at the point where like we're like no we can't do this in one fight we have to train up and like work together and in five days we have to beat these people where we're all going to die kind of yes. a situation yeah exactly um, so I I completely agree I was building up to that like I hope we're building up to like that Alabasta our yeah. first big emotional climax kind of thing mm-hmm. uh, man let's hope this fight scene with the fucking xenomorph is so good Yes, uh, Okarun versus the Xenomorph. Before we get to that real quick, I wanted to bring up, like, I audibly gasped at the design of their real alien forms with the octopus guy. Yeah. I don't know why, but, like, it's just such a serious design. We've seen a lot of goofy robots with these aliens, and then you look into this Cthulhu motherfucker, and it it just really hits different. And I love how much Ira, like, Ira had to hide, uh, (laughs) if that's her name, had to hard carry this fight and and barely (laughs) escape. So I I, think this is a good moment for her because, like, she's definitely the most lacking main character by, like, a large stretch. So I'm always Mm -hmm. looking for moments that kind of elevate her a little bit. I like her near the end of this run. Uh, but we'll get there. But I, uh, I'm with you with the design because I was, when I saw it, I was taken aback because I, my brain didn't process that was, what was actually inside the suit and i was very confused yes it it was just genuinely shocking like 
Yeah. It's just, it's a level of seriousness that we have not gotten from the aliens yet, which, yeah. well, let's get into it now, because it's been a, a freaking talking point for at least, like, two of our talks, where, like, the spirits get a lot of love in this story, in the story, where they get, like, really stunning visuals, they get very touching backstories, they integrate with the main party, and so far, the only alien integration with the main party is the shrimp boy, which I didn't re—I didn't really consider him a main party member until this arc, really. Yeah, so same. maybe that's my <laughs> bad. Maybe I was misreading the room, but yeah, he's a party member. Yeah. Um. He's but a... <laughs> yeah, like this arc is definitely making them a serious threat. They got cool designs. Vamola is an alien that we're gonna latch onto, yeah. but also the Serpioin that is with Momo is quickly becoming one of my most interested in characters. Um, mm. I really like that guy. We'll talk about him in a little bit. Chapter 82. Yeah. Uh, I would say that this is one of the best Dan to Dan chapters, period. It's so good. It is just balls to the wall action, great art <laughs> shots everywhere. Um, mm -hmm. Like, just this opening page here in page two and three where Okarun is just dismantling one of the aliens, two of the aliens right off the bat. Yeah, he takes out the stunning. flying xenomorph and the one of the taller mantises. Yeah, it's it's awesome, and the fight just keeps going from there. Um, the scale of speed and dodging is great, and I was yeah. saying like I could feel a lot of influence from both when he fought the evil eye, but when he trained with rhythm, I yes. could kind of see some of that in here. And I don't know if you, you, you can if you you can definitely see it too. when he's like taking on Mel Gear Rex, where he's like jumping from like knee to knee and put hit, hitting the the rocket. Arms. Yes, my viz is uh, uh, being very difficult, but yes, that it, is that is when I had in mind for sure. Yeah, well, he's doing uh, the, he also the does stomps. it against the xenomorph spread, where like you can definitely see him doing that look that like jump at the beginning and it whiffs, and he has to like they're like dodging and moving around. And he's like doing like the ground pound in the middle of it. This xenomorph uh, fight's crazy. I will say it was yeah. a little. It was the only time where I felt like it was hard to keep up with the action the first time. <laughs> So I did have to reread that fight like once or twice because of the gravity manipulation in particular. Yes. Because even before it happens to Okarun, there's a point where the gravity manipulation happens to the Xenomorph. And like that in particular, for some reason, really threw me off where I was like, what just what, what was that weird dodge? I think it's at page eight and nine where um, mm -hmm. there's like a moment where it kind of happens to him or like it, and I really like getting pulled in and the spin kicks uh, it's just all very cool. Um, yeah. And of course, it's coming from what I presume, like, I, I think we presume that this guy was Vamola's husband, potentially, or like, who she, who she's actually betrothed to. Yeah. Just, the, the big, tall yeah. man. Yeah. Who's got probably the best design of the bunch. He's yeah. so good. Looks very uh, cool. I like how he... <laughs> I like how the Xenomorph... Like he sees that Ogre is going to do the, like that squatting like upwards attack, mm -hmm. and so he like pushes him back to wish whiff punish him. Yes, there's the, the... there's whiff punishing here. We, we... Yeah, <laughs> it's so good with with Marvel assist. He's got the gravity assist going on. Yeah, uh, the ending of the fight is brutal. He takes like a very intense kick sequence and then gets just the way that the gravity squeeze is drawn. Uh, yeah. I really noted that as, like, being a very powerful feeling attack. Not your traditional, like, impact that you would see mm. in, in Dan to Dan, but, like, just the use of, like, not negative space, but, like, distorted darkness makes it seem like such an intense gravity squeeze. And the way that Okarun's standing after it, his, his body is just completely given out. Yeah. Is this the first time we've seen our boy just get completely beat? I think so. That's crazy. It's that, yeah. if if that doesn't tell you that this is the most serious arc so far, like no, we say these guys are serious, and then they pull out a plunger <laughs> gun, <laughs> stick it right on his nuts. Yeah. When the when the uh. mantis guy showed up, I was like, who the fuck is this? Because I'm used to now seeing him with his like weird hat thing on. Yeah. Um. But Dang. hey, it's it's our hidden fifth, sixth party member. There you go. I also Do you really, fight for 24 uh, hours, businessman? <laughs> business, what is he talking about? <laughs> I think he mentioned how they're collectors or like miners, basically. So he's a, a business person, like he's an, an industry person. Oh, I did not pick up on that. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Which leads us to 83, which is the Momo fight. And 
I gotta say, when the page turn happens and you see that man, I was like, yeah. what? We're doing that? And of course, it's a cult, so you gotta do it. Mm -hmm. uh, for anyone that doesn't know, that man is like a... I think it's it's just an internet hoax, but it, it was yeah. widespread where people were having dreams of this one peculiar face. And I saw it in an atrocity guide video a while back. And mm -hmm. I just like, I saw it and I was taken aback. And then you turn the page and there's multiple that mans in the room. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very reminiscent of Momo. Like it's, it's the second or third time that she gets ganged up in a room full of creepy men, aliens. Yeah. So that's just kind of a, it's like the first chapter. That's what happens. It happened in the hot springs too, with like yeah, I, for, I forgot the what gators. Was. They there were gators, right? I was gonna call gator men, but I was like, my mind was like, surely it wasn't gator men. But it yeah, was. it was. <laughs> um, and it's revealed here that Vamola was the advance party, and Momo takes this way too seriously, which is a little bit annoying. Like she's clearly, and I want her to address it in the future. She's clearly letting her jealousy get in the way of like what is obviously logic here where you you shouldn't just trust these people like you don't know at w of what extent she is an advanced party for the alien attack she could be here completely against her will yeah i i have a feeling it's like she escaped and she landed here she was and... trapped yeah i got the sense that she was forced to come here by her father or husband or whoever um and she has to do it, and she's been trying to communicate that to them, but she can't. Yeah. Or could, if Vamola is actually a bad guy, that'd be that'd be a wild trip. That'd be wild and upsetting. But, why why we gotta have the dinosaur girl go? That's not fun. Yeah, I mean, like it's a dinosaur girl who could turn invisible. That's like totally up Joe's alley. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the great. peak character design. Her. Her, that shot of her, and I think it's Okaroon, or maybe it's Momo, just walking down the street, and she's in her full dino outfit, is, like, the cutest, funniest thing to me. <laughs> a lot of great humor has been done with that outfit, with the with the little hoodie that she does at yeah. some point. Um, I mm -hmm. like when she just transforms into it for offense. Uh, yeah. And it, it's it's used very for a very sad scene uh, in the last chapter we'll talk about, or the second to last. But the Sarpoyon yeah. shows up here, and he looks so raw with the scar. Uh huh. Give back our merchandise. I can't believe I'm a huge fan of this loser now. <laughs> the, the sex predator. Yeah, how do you feel about sex predator coon? Because I, I I've become a fan. I hate to say it. Uh, I I'm very tentative about his like. I like that he he we're adding him back into the plot, but like it's very much like a I don't trust this man as far as I can throw them kind of a thing. Yes, there's a, a panel that's very telling when they're in the manga yes. cafe where while Momo's asleep, he takes out... It's not a it's not a, a dick anymore. I think it was coming out of his stomach this time, at least. So he's... Still phallic-like, though. Yeah, it's not great. Uh, Mr. Tatsu here decided to make him a little less creepy this time, uh, which is nice, but... um. Yes, I will say, I think my note for chapter 84 is that this is insanity. Because it's basically yeah. like, um, I think they, they likened it to Red Rover, where they just have to convert aliens from Serpoyon to that man's, and yeah. uh, that's a fight that would only happen in Dandanan, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, like, they get stronger when more sync up, so, like, they're able to push back more and more. Yes, what is that? Like, they have that, that page where they, they all do, like, that T-stance. I think that's probably chapter 85. And they say they're in the awesome zone. I was like, I this that's is... 84. Weird. Three yeah. of us put us in the awesome zone. <laughs> I want to be in the awesome zone. I think, yeah. If Tyler it's joined like, us today, we'd be in the awesome zone. But here we are, just, just to do yeah. <laughs> This is fucking crazy. Um, It also makes me wonder if, like... Are they Serapons or are they, um, not the that man's, but the other ones? Like, it makes me think like they're more of a hive mind kind of like alien creature sort of deal. Do you mean the ceiling psychic guy or the that man's? The other one, the ceiling psychic guy. I think that's a, I don't know if we get an explanation for that guy. 
the the that man's are they're like they're they're serpions yeah. that got uh converted because i guess like they don't have that much autom- auto- un- yeah. autonomy yeah. over their like i think is it like are they fully robots or are they organisms in robot bodies i can't that's tell what anymore. i'm saying because like when you look at them only one of them has the eyes drawn they're all everyone else is blacked out eyes true so i'm just wondering like if it's kind of like some a of them weird... might be suits then maybe some maybe they're all. like programs like maybe like when you go into like this dimension like they're able to summon more kind of a thing mm-hmm. this chapter goes into the power of words which um it's 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 a it seems like a pun based power system very oda like here where yeah. your words give power where they write like a bat but it's like a pun on a power of nessie because nessie's the strongest thing mm-hmm. it, it feels like i don't fully understand where that's going but i feel like that's going to be a power up for momo and i i think that's what the moe moe tribeam is mm-hmm. where uh she uh does a huge beam attack which is awesome <laughs> And she's doing uh, she's doing Kikoho's from Dragon Ball, which is awesome. Uh, and it's, yeah, she's just basically got magical girl powers now. So we we have like a way she can expand. Uh, Gigi's working on his Kamehameha waves, and Ira is just kind of being herself. <laughs> she she might not need a power up necessarily. She probably just needs everyone else to catch up to her because she's probably like. Yeah. From from the get go, she felt like what the third strongest, more or less. She she always felt like a little stronger than Momo, to me. Yeah, well she well I think part of it too is that like Momo really needs to focus and like she's like yeah. the heavy catheter where she needs to charge up a little bit. Well, Momo's get, like working on a completely different power system from the other three. Yeah, yeah, but like I feel like she needs focus and like if focus is broken from her, like if she gets hit, then like she loses concentration on what she's doing. Uh, but. I also feel like for this Moe Moe Tri-Beam thing, she's going to end up, like, developing a move for each of her different friends, right? Like, mm. she's going to have, like, a moment associated with them in the word, and that's what's going to make the, the other powers manifest. That would be cool, because this one, I think, was based on Okarun and, like, what he made her do at the... No, well... Uh. Or would it be her school friends? Because all of them were involved in that... Moe, Moe I think it's definitely she... Oak Room because number one, the school friends are like blocked out from the, like the thought bubbles. Well, there you but go. it's also like the two of them like crushed together and they're doing this like really cutesy thing and it's like and it's a it's, heart. Like, so yeah, yeah. And it's it, it's the embarrassment of like I would I do like to do this, but at the same time I'm really embarrassed I'm doing this. But at the same time I'm excited that it's happening. Like it's just all strong emotions in that one moment. Yeah, for sure. And uh, for the last stretch here, I really like the the truce that the Serpoian makes with Momo. And I really like how the scene is drawn where the, there's a tensity with them all surrounding her and them talking to her. And she's like still pretending like she can fight. Um, and he's pretending like he can fight, but neither of them really can. So they have to make a reluctant truce, which leads to the manga cafe bit. Yeah. Which, uh, what did you think of that bit? I thought it was, like, a little inconsequential. It was just some weird fan service to, like, look up her skirt a little bit. It didn't really add to much. I think it's also just, to, like, it's, I think it's a way to, like, move on for the next day and not have to deal with Raiko just yet. But I think it's also to add that looming threat of, of the Serapon guy. Yes, I would say that's the main takeaway I got here. It's particularly that yeah. scene where he's going to maybe probe her. The thing is, you we can't know for sure what he's doing because I don't know what that needle does. It, maybe it's something that was addressed in that first arc, but I don't really know what he's even trying to do here. So maybe it's not as bad as we think. It's probably yeah. worse than we think, but yeah. I digress. Well, but, so this arm kind of looks like the same technology as like the... As, as like the main bad guy like the way the plating is made sure, drawn I could, I could see that yeah so it's i don't know it i don't have any good i feel no good intentions from this man oh when it comes but to... i mean let's be real you don't think he's gonna turn by the end oh i oh i think he's uh towards their side yeah mm, 
I don't really, know. Really, I am all on board with his uh, heroic turn. I think this I is think... this is a missing key to that balance I was talking about with aliens and ghosts, where maybe we have like this. Pro- he's he's now become the he's gonna become the Frieza, this 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 pickable ally that we got to we got to hang out with. <laughs> Maybe. I, I also like how Raiko takes over the body of this man. Yes, with the mirror. Um, that's yeah. the thing, though. Like, I'm, so, I was so excited for more Raiko stuff, but I, I, I feel like because this was such a short chapter, we are clearly building up to a very cool like. Raiko's gonna show up at either the worst or best time and completely change the status quo of whatever scene's going on. So here's the question: When they're in this hotel, oh, I guess if they're in this hotel room, they're not in this mansion. Right, because it just isolates the people they want to isolate. Correct? They're not in the what? So remember how, like, whenever they fight the aliens, the aliens like make another dimension that's an exact copy that they fight in. Yes, they th- that did happen in the maid cafe. Yeah. So I, okay. Yeah. So but, they definitely left that. But there's no dimension beam. Well, th- they extend the dimension to walk to the cafe, and then I think he turns off the cloak. And then they're just in the real world after that. Because I'm just curious about like how, because part of me thinks that Raiko's going to come in in the final fight, and yeah, I'll have to like. Me too. And but like I don't know how it's going to work if they keep having to fight in this other dimensional thing. Um, maybe she can reach across them somehow because she's a ghost. That's a good point, actually, because because they fight the one alien that <sighs> yeah. they're like that guy's in another dimension. We can't deal with him, but you can. Um. So I wonder if it's like kind of like that kind of a situation. We'll have to see if an alien breaks out of the curtain, but that would be so late into the arc. Like that, like there, that's not going to happen right off the bat. That happened like thwart, towards the middle or end. So I guess we won't know for a while if Reiko's going to show up for the final fight or not. Yeah. But that's yeah, that's a good call out actually. Which uh, I really like when Momo gets back to the house because everyone looks genuinely beat up. It's it's a lot more dire than we've ever seen. I'm. I also really like the use of that one bloody blanket where it's just a dead alien, and I thought it was Okaroon. Yeah. Okaroon was... is not looking particularly hot, though, <laughs> to be fair. No, he is not. Joe, tell me about I... the fight with um, with the Mola, because like, this was a, a scene I really needed, personally. Yeah, like, uh, this was kind of gut-wrenching for me, because mm-hmm. it's definitely one of those things where it's like, from us the audience we can definitely tell like Vamola's is pretty innocent like she's kind of just walking through things she's not hostile to anybody and she's genuinely trying to make an effort to be friends with people and it's it is that jealousy fuel from like momo and it's sad because momo is like literally throwing her shoes at her it, you would a dog in a movie me- i mean like like a like a bad chick fight like a like a yeah. really messy messy girl fight but that's mm-hmm. so good because it takes these annoying moments with Momo that I had with her, her being overly, like, mean over someone, like, when she's not official with Okaroon, and makes it, like, a deliberate front-facing flaw where it's, mm-hmm. like, Tatsu is very much acknowledging that this is, like, gut-wrenching and the, yeah. the, not shying away from it. So it opens room for, like, because it was taken so seriously in the scene, it's not just an annoying joke anymore. Like, it's going to be room for improvement for real um and that's got me really excited to see how uh how this develops like, and we were saying like we need that alabasta like big emotional moment because the the series has been non-stop super fun right, right. But, like i we've I've, i think we've gone grown so attached to the characters where we're like we're ready for something a little more hard-hitting now i feel mm-hmm. and we're getting there maybe i mean this this kind of hit hard already Th- this was a little taste of that for me for, yeah to be honest because because like vomola has just recently entered the story but she's just too sweet to see this happen and you know momo even momo feels bad about it she's so angry at the end of the chapter she's ready and to go it's, all, it's also one of those things where like vomola doesn't say anything like after like they leave the house and she you don't see anything on her face you just see this dinosaur and it's like we're seeing what basically what um momo is seeing in vomola it's like this is just another thing we fought and we need it needs to go away I'm going to tell it to go away finally. At the same like the... time, the dinosaur is such a goofy face that you you can't help but feel like it's, it's just an innocent, dumb dinosaur 
So yeah. it's, like, it's this enemy, but this innocent one. So it just feels it's so bad cute. It like it. Yeah. It, it's like how can you be mad at this thing? And it and it's not even like doing anything to like rebel. It's it's just taking it and it's just accepting its fate. Which this panel of the dinosaur turning away and like going invisible, is so sad to me. It hurts. It's me. so upsetting. It, it is a very yeah. upsetting panel. Ugh. Because uh, it's also one of those things where, like, I don't know how you get her back to the story. She has to come in and, like, save the day somehow, I think. Yeah, but... um, yeah, it's gonna be, there's nothing real set up for it. It's just gonna happen the, the way it yeah. happens. Uh, in Chapter 89, I think my favorite bit is Gigi actually being the reasonable one and arguing with Momo. And Momo's clearly, like, making it's bad faith arguments. Yes. And it's down to our uh, dying Okaroon to, to get them to stop fighting. Uh, do you have any shout-outs for 89? God, I don't think so. 89... So 89 is just really the kind of, like, transition part where, like, we're just yes. going from, like, we, we finished this beat, now we need, we're setting the exposition up for, like, the rest of this arc. Mm -hmm. Um... And I thought this was interesting that we're finally getting like a, a like an expositional setup for an arc, whereas previously it's just like we're gonna keep going and fuck you, I'm not telling you what we're doing. <laughs> like, yeah, do, do... even like even the evil line, which was the most like heavy arc up until this point, it felt like stumbling into nonsense, which is the dead end yeah. special. But yeah, here this we one have like, like a proper arc. Maybe maybe yeah. it'll work out poorly. Maybe Tatsu can handle an actual setup arc. Who knows? I doubt it. Yeah. But, uh, I, I think he's got a good editor and they know what they're doing for sure i think Can you, i feel like he's also building up to this like team collab sort of situation yes where uh, like the, the size of the fleet is very intimidating too you got all these star wars ships and yeah i really like the main ship it, it looks like it's got like a whale mouth which i think is a really cool design it's got a fucking horn yes uh, we got a nice interlude chapter, 89.1, with uh, the color pages. Very nice that Tatsu took a break. He uh, definitely deserves it. But definitely can you believe it. this guy was an assistant to Chainsaw Man? If that ain't the most backward shit you've ever seen. <laughs> like, yeah. Fuck. That's wild uh, to me. Hey, you picked up some good writing. Um, 90, though. Got, has those, some great... got some gags. You want to talk about the gags in 90? Yeah. Yeah. First of all, Minecraft Man is apparently the most powerful being in the universe. Yeah, I had to remember who this guy was, and it just made it so much funnier. <laughs> I just rose up and built a house. Uh, so funny. Uh, Imagine God coming down and like, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Yeah, Sir Point is like, you met that guy? He's like the most knowledgeable dude. He trapped, like, to meet him is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. <laughs> like, yeah. He just built a Minecraft house that they used to turn into a giant bike. The thing you kicked, I kicked this, such a person. It's like, you kicked him? <laughs> <laughs> so good. But great. anyways, they like, <laughs> they, they're trying to figure out, because they need to move the house, because they can't have Reiko at night while they're while they're uh, fighting, and they can't have the aliens track them down either, so then you go to an isolated location where they can practice and not be interrupted. And they're like, oh, we'll turn the house into a car. Oh, we don't know how to drive a car, but we know how to do a bike. And we get this fucking page reveal, this giant ass jank bike with the wheel in the back is way too big. The wheel in the front's way too small. Not to mention it's like 20 feet tall. What were they thinking? Uh, what did they think would happen? <laughs> no, it's so, the kickstand doesn't even work properly. Like, <laughs> It's so bad, but hey, they there's a step up after that where it turns into a gigantic kitty. So it is so funny because like Okarun's just hanging out from his mouth. <laughs> I like Okarun hanging too. Also, when Okarun looks like the most defeated, he's talking about his testicles, which is just some very dark humor. Uh, yeah. That was last chapter, they settle yeah. on this fucked up car house, and that <laughs> kicks us off into the training arc that we're getting into. So yeah, the fact that we're getting into a training arc means we're going into some very serious action in, in comparison to everything else i think yeah this is definitely like we're i think it, it's kind of the moment where like i wonder sometimes like when it comes to manga like we do tra they do training arcs because they need time to just kind of like breathe in like move sets for new characters or think of move sets for characters um 
I mean, I'm going to say mostly not because they could very well, like, you could dream up a move and just do it, especially in a loose power system like this. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I think that they want to set up the character beats. A training arc is always about more, it's about setting up the moves so they don't come out of nowhere, but it's also about setting up the character moments that'll happen. Well, like, one of the best, like, segments is Naruto is, like, Sasuke and Naruto, like, doing the competition where they run up the tree. Yes. Uh, actually, the even better ones, when they both attack, like, that water tower, and you get to see the difference in their attacks where Sasuke is just, like, penetrates the front. But Naruto yeah. looks like he did nothing, but the entire back of the water tower is completely blown out. Yeah. And that's so, our Naruto analysis podcast. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Um, everyone read Toriko. Uh, Jeez. yeah, but like, uh, this chapter, uh, they, they go downstairs and they have like the big open, like warehouse with the snail, uh, the snail holograms. This has to be a one piece reference, right? No. Like, not you don't think, unfortunately, not everything is a one piece or Jojo's reference, Joe. I hate are you sure? Them. These are literally snails broadcasting information. No, uh, yeah, well, you know, it's in J- in Japan. It's common to have tele snails, so I yeah. think you're just being. I like how we get a good lineup of the aliens we have to fight, so yes. we have a clearer vision of like who we're looking at. And then right? these are like the bottom of the barrel. We're gonna get way stronger, more messed up aliens. Uh, you said you like the Ira stuff in this in this bit. I I love how we've been saying her name wrong probably the whole time, but yeah, uh, I, I like. Want you, I want you to talk about that a little bit. I I just I like how she ends up taking over the role of the person that's going to criticize them because like the the group dynamic as a whole has been very wholesome and like they're very much like always cheering each other on but ira is going to be having to play the mom and or this ira, situation be ira's like, gonna be the bitch i'll say it <laughs> yeah that, that's gonna be role. the when, bitch or the nami Mo- momo like, is mean to uh the mola but ira is mean to everybody yeah, and it's like she's she's stepping up and like saying like you're not doing things correct. Like she's being the hard coach that you need to like actually improve. And I think that's a really good spot for her to be in where it's like she's being critical of what she's doing. And I think that could be really good in like some character moments later of like she's the one that's gonna keep it straight when she's not fawning over Okarun Kun. When she's like out when yes. he's out of the room, she's gonna be the one that's gonna tell yes, things straight. She'll be I think. a better character when it's not about Okarun. <laughs> yes. That's what I need. Which leads and, us to the end of the chapter, which Okaru Astro Projecting is the funniest shit ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I really hate how this chapter ends, though. Um, I will say it's nice that Gigi has a serious moment. He clearly still has some feelings for Momo, and it's cool that, like, he puts on his jokes because it's the only way he really knows how to interact with Momo without being, like, overwhelmed at how cool yeah. she is and how much he likes her. At least I that's how really I read like... this. I don't know how you read this bit. Uh huh. But go ahead. No, I was just saying that's how I read it. How did you read it? No, I agree. And like, what I'm really hoping for is that, like, I don't know if it'll happen now, but it'd be kind of cool if, like, Gigi and Okuru and like have a conversation, like even now, where like they just they they just kind of understand and set the boundaries for each other with Momo. Even if they're just like they go like, we're gonna have a friendly, we're gonna keep it civil when it comes to trying winning her over. Uh. Gigi's just like, I understand how you feel about her. That's why I'm not trying to do it. Respect how you feel and how she feels about you. Like, I feel like that's a conversation coming, or I would like that be coming soon, but we'll see. <sighs> but then that would require Tatsu to stop doing this stupid love quadrangle bullshit. I'm, at, I'm getting a little tired of it. I'll, I'll have to see how next chapter comes out. But like, oh, Okarun stumbled into them hanging out. Now he's gonna not going to confess that he loves her for another 20 chapters. If we get to chapter 100 and the confession hasn't happened yet, this is a town where you lived 2.0. It's trash. I, I, that, that's not true. It, it won't be trash. Yeah. But I am, I, I am getting a little bit fed up with, like, I feel like I just feel like this is going to be another delay. It would just be cool if we get it on and we have a story where it's not like a will they, won't they. It's just like, will they, won't they? And then they did. And then they kept doing. And we got to explore what the actual relationship was like. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm too grumpy of a man to be discussing a rom-com series sometimes. Probably. <laughs> like, it's just some things always have to be the way they are. But maybe they won't be. They don't Once have, again. But they don't have to be because this series 
kind of started in like a good trajectory to be like yeah i'm taking yeah. this seriously and we're gonna we're gonna mess around a little bit but we're gonna get there eventually mm-hmm. but hey i'm gonna eat my words when next chapter rolls out and momo or uh <laughs> okarun is just like oh you know this was a misunderstanding i can also totally see like Gigi being able to see okarun in this situation like he wakes up in the middle of the night and sees him mm. uh or they might be all be able to see him because of fucking ghosts and they all have ghosts. Yeah, Who we don't knows? actually know what's happening here, <laughs> very yeah. importantly. This could just be an out-of-body situ- thing that doesn't actually happen, right? Like, you know how people in coma... Uh, I don't know if, if they go this far as to see real-world events outside their body, but who knows. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, so going forward from here... I think how many chapters more chapters of training? Two, three more chapters? Yeah, two or three sounds right. Yeah. The way the pace that he likes to go. And then like the the real question is like is Okroon gonna be up to snuff for the fight, or do you think he's gonna be out for like most of it or all of it? Hmm. I think he will be like a Namek Saga Goku where he's still healing mid battle. Yeah. And it's either yeah. that or he's kind of like nerfed during the fight. Um, but then like mm-hmm. you want to get the raw Okarun moments. And maybe you, you still do. Because like Okarun's so cool when he's going off. So maybe mm-hmm. like he just pushes himself past his limits and and still has like his cool moment. And then the question yeah. is like who steps up uh, to the plate if, if Okarun's not the big dog. And I, I don't know if, we're, if the evil eye is going to cooperate this arc yet. That's I can see the evil like cooperating if, if they eventually go like, hey, they're gonna kill Okarun, and if he dies, you'll never be able to play with him again. Kind I of a f- thing. Didn't they sort? I feel like they tried it a little bit earlier. I might be misremembering, but also the evil eye didn't have much time to for them to coerce because he immediately got Ooh. aura aura by like the punching machine. Yes, so, I could see that. Um. I feel like Vamola will be, I think, the the big hero with her return. Yeah, and she'll do some I cool so stuff. Too. I think but, so. Like, but in, I really think we we need talk talk her talk a rune or whatever, uh, in 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 the mech to to get this done. Yeah, I can also see it where like she ends up having like sacrifice herself. Like she goes through like this whatever gate to like turn it off and ends up on the other side, and then they have to go get her. And then yes. the next starts like them in space. We're we're I'm like ninety nine percent sure we're gonna rescue her next arc from whatever yeah. fate happens. <laughs> pretty pretty sure we're going to go to space, and they're like, "All right, we'll give it back to her, but you have to win this soccer match." Oh, s- hold that thought. What are what are your closing thought? I guess that was your closing thought. Where we're gonna go from now? Yeah, basically. Uh, just general thoughts on the arc. Um, I'm liking where we're going enemy wise and I'm, I'm very excited for it. i like it's the question but this is also the first time where like we have a lot of threads set up a day to day and we need to see how he's going to pull them off mm. basically yeah like it, it's everything first else big but... test for for this yes. kind of thing yeah because it's like we have the plot thread we have the alien plot thread that's a big one we have the seropod plot thread we don't know what he's doing we have um Raiko, who is a like looming threat plot thread. We have oh, Amola man. who's now gone. Um and we and... have the student president coming in, coming in hot anytime now. Potentially. <laughs> that was like a lower plot thread. Yeah, but yeah. Grandma could also end up just coming back and be like, what the fuck is happening? That's yeah. another possibility. Hey, hey, granddaughter, you're uh getting possessed. I'm going to leave you for a few days. Now she's probably getting things to go deal with the Ryko situation perfectly. Yeah, she's probably getting the thing that they need to like bind her to something. Buy um, a phone, bitch. What are you doing? <laughs> Your granddaughter's gonna die. It's fucking funny. Because like Turbo Granny went with her, and I feel like Turbo they we're gonna cut back. To like some fucking grandma and turbo granny misadventures, and it's gonna be great. I That's think gonna, that would be cute. That would be really that would cute. Be great. It's just two old women yelling at each other in the fucking flea market looking for some junk. That sounds great. Oh, dude, I definitely need this scene. Yeah. Um, I I agree with you. Love this arc. Actually, it was very uh, despite like I think romantically it had some of my most frustrating moments, but it hey it had the love the the L word drop. 
That's pretty yeah. good. I was worried that Vamola was gonna say "I love you" uh, when Momo was being mean to her, which would have yeah. kind of given away that Okarun said it, something like that. But well, maybe maybe we'll save the "I love you" for later. Yeah, because uh, she likes repeating words. But that mm -hmm. aside, I like it's not quite at the evil eye arc level, but it has so much potential. And like you said, I think, this is, I think this we'll is get, the test. Yeah, I think we'll get above that in the upcoming like fights and like Ag chicanery we're gonna get into. Agreed. What Those if, are my hopes. What if they do the fucking One Piece mech collection thing that Frankie failed at the end? Joe, you can't be doing this. That's not a One Piece thing. <laughs> yeah, I know, but like, I just think it'd be funny. Team up attack. Uh, no, de I'm definitely expecting some hype team up and teamwork. Yeah. I mean, we've seen this. This manga is really good at teamwork, so mm -hmm. it's gonna be it's crazy a... after they've trained. Yeah, uh, I just so... but like one thing Does that Mantis was established. Die no, hell no. Arc. If anyone's going to die, it would be either Vamola or Ta Takakun. Takakun. Ta <laughs> Takakura. Takakura, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. God, that's so funny that we didn't know his name for like 10 chapters and they finally dropped it. I, but I think genuinely it was not given to us for that time. No, it wasn't. Because yeah. I, I like triple checked when we were going through, like, what the fuck is this guy? Because I remember. We... Didn't they call him Kintakun initially? Or maybe his name yeah, is Takakura. But like that's like pervert or something like that. But wait, isn't Takakura the actor that they think Okarun is? That's. That is that is Okuru's name, but like his name is his name is different, if I remember correctly. Oh Christ! Uh, We've been calling him the Okuru actor name. This the whole is time. so hard when two of the male leads have the same exact kind of word structure, and two of the female <laughs> leads have the, the same exact word structure. Like, oh. you know, be better podcasters and book talkers would have brought up a wiki to get all the names right, but not us. <laughs> Never I else. don't think Dan Dan has a wiki yet. It's too new. Hey, how come no one's talking about one of the best manga out right now? What's going on with that? I don't know, man. As soon as this shit gets anime, it's gonna blow up. It's yeah. gonna get fucking crazy. It will be. I like all the JoJo people. Like sheep migrated to Chainsaw Man as a collective. They didn't even look at anything else. They're like, okay, Chainsaw Man's the new JoJo. It's like, hey, Dan it is right there. Where you going? Yeah, his name is Kenta Zakata. That's his name. We were getting it wrong completely this entire time. I, hey, I remember it was Kenta last second after uh, people have clicked out of the video because it was the yep. wrong name. But her name is Ira, right? Yes, it Christ. is Ira. Okay, we're one for two at least. We'll take those. But uh, then we this... have Gigi, Momo, Yase. Uh, we don't mess those up anymore. We used to mess up Momo, <laughs> to be fair. Yeah. Um, but uh, this arc set up different factions among aliens and ghosts. So yeah. that soccer match might become a tournament arc. No, even, no. it may not be soccer, but we are, just become, we are very much going for tournament arc. I think it's going to become a. It's just going to cross over with Blue Lock. Like, <laughs> no, Blue Lock. Blue Lock. I don't. I don't need a fake battle royale soccer. I want a genuine shonen ass tournament. I want, yeah. the, I want the real deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but right. those are my thoughts. Yeah. And uh, we'll but catch y'all. find a wiki. Oh, yes, the wiki exists, and next time we'll have it pulled up, and you will get us the names. But um, yes. I, I'm hoping we don't go 18 chapters next time. Hopefully we do it in like 10 or 12. Oh, I think that would be yeah, well, the amount. We keep on trying to like wait till like an arc finishes. It's... The, it, it's it, we're past that point where he's doing big arcs now. We just gotta yeah, and like find points. well, also it doesn't help that like his mini arcs like also just very easily flow into his bigger arcs because we're like we're keeping with Raiko and then suddenly aliens attack. What the fuck? There's been so many times where it's like, hey Joe, is it a good time to catch up on Dan Dan? And you're like, oh yeah, we're we are almost done with the arc, and it's actually an interlude starting a new section of the story. Yeah, I, but that's cool. Like the story flows into itself well, despite being kind of like arc mm -hmm. of the month kind of thing but like it all flows really well so it works yeah. out anyways catch yeah. us in about a volume or two worth content uh next time for dan and dan we'll see if our predictions come true <laughs> bye bye